Hey everyone, a slightly different video from me. I am with baby, he's just waking up, bless him. But um, today I thought I'd film for you my birth story video and first of all I obviously wanted to introduce you to the man himself. <laughs> this is Noah, um, Noah Finley Thompson. He was born on the 6th of December 2023, so it's actually exactly a month today, um, his birthday that I'm filming this video, it's the 6th of January. Okay, he was born at £6.4, um, he was late but I will go into all of that in this video, but I just wanted to share little baby with you, um, he's so much bigger already, I don't actually know what he weighs at the moment, but yeah, he's heavier, he's longer. Are you waking up? You want to say hello to everyone? Hello everyone. <laughs> His hair is crazy today. He's got so much hair. Um, so yeah, this is our new addition to the Thompson family. Um, I don't think he's very happy with me because I've just woken him up from a little, a little nap. But I'm going to go put you back now. You can be with daddy for a bit. Um, so yeah, today's video I'm going to go into my birth story. It was a positive birth story. I was actually induced um, and I know there's a lot of, not controversy, but like fears around induction and stuff. So that's kind of why I wanted to share it as well because mine was a positive experience. You're getting hungry, aren't you? I'm going to go put him back. Um, I'm going to go settle this little guy down and I will be back. Okay, we are back. Um, if you can hear now in the background, he is crying for his bottle at the moment, but dad is sorting that out. Dad is with him um, whilst I film today's video. It feels really weird to be back because, yeah, I haven't filmed obviously for weeks and weeks. Um, but I'm glad to be back with this video to kick start off the new year as well. Um, like I said, it's currently the 6th of January today, but I think when you guys are watching this, you'll be like another week on, um, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm sorry it's taken me a little while to sort this video out, but yeah, it's obviously just getting used to everything. Mum life, lack of sleep. The only reason I've actually got done something to my hair today, it's looking a bit flat, um, and got makeup on is because I'm actually going to my friend's baby shower this afternoon so that's really exciting so yeah I've made a bit more effort than usual I'm not just sitting in my pajamas or joggers but anyway let's quick talk about that um today is going to be my birth story so I'm gonna jump right into it I think because I feel like this could be quite lengthy um so Noah was um due his due date was the second saturday the second of december we passed that date he never came um on that date so if we fast forward then to the tuesday the 5th of december um i woke up that morning and i just wasn't happy with his movements um i could feel him but it was a lot less than i was used to and it just it felt different to me so I called the hospital um, and asked if I could come in and be checked over and of course they said yeah please come in um, so that's what we did me and Mark went to the hospital and they monitored me obviously with like the tapes and everything they put around my belly um, I'll try and insert a photo maybe here actually of me with those tapes on um, I think that was the door one sec yeah, so I had the um, the tapes and everything on and everything was absolutely fine. His heart rate was normal. Um, I still couldn't feel him as often because you have to like push a button. Every time you would feel a kick, I would basically push a button and it wasn't that often. And they didn't really know why I couldn't feel him as much, to be honest. Um, and because I was also already past my due date, I kind of knew in my head that the next topic of discussion was going to be induction anyway. Um, so that's obviously what they suggested to me and they said that they could actually book me in for induction as soon as 3 p.m that day um i really didn't want to be induced um the whole way through my pregnancy i think i had this fear around it that it was going to be more painful and longer like another fear of mine i didn't want to be in hospital for like 
days on end and I thought I would be with being induced as well so I really didn't want to be but obviously the midwife said to me look your baby's absolutely fine but you could go home and if you're still not feeling much movement that's not going to put your mind at rest and actually that's going to prevent you from going into natural labour anyway because you'll probably be stressing about the fact that you still can't feel him as much so yeah in the end we basically decided that I was going to be induced that day so we went home <laughs> We packed some last things in the hospital bag, they were all packed anyway. Um, and then yeah, we headed back to the hospital for 3 p.m. Um, so the first thing they actually wanted to do was put a balloon inside me, which they basically inflate once it's in with saline solution. I think the idea of that is that it will hopefully sort of naturally get labour started so this isn't actually I don't think they actually class this as the start of induction but there's no hormones or anything going into you um but yeah by the inflation of this balloon I believe it's meant to just naturally start labour um and the midwife actually said to me that my cervix was um quite like stretchy or like bouncy or something which is a good thing but it was still quite long and obviously for labour it needs to be quite short so um but yeah it was um it was like yeah bouncy I think it wasn't like firm or anything so that was a good thing so they popped the balloon in they said that I could then go home um and within 24 hours I would need to come back so either something would have happened <laughs> I would have gone into labour or the balloon would have fallen out which is also a good sign or if nothing happened then I'd have to come back within 24 hours anyway um so we went home within half an hour of being home the balloon fell out um so we went back to the hospital and basically that's when my induction like properly started so like this whole process it took it wasn't very long but when you're just sitting there waiting for things it seemed like quite a long time um every time they would do something they would monitor Noah's heart rate and also mine and they would monitor it for at least sort of half an hour so before they would do anything we had that process as well so the next thing was them breaking my waters um so they they did that for me that was absolutely fine um didn't really yeah it was just like warm a huge warm wee um coming out of me um so yeah it wasn't horrible or anything um and what was the next thing it's really difficult to remember it was only four weeks ago but part of my labor does seem like a bit of a blur um but anyway so yeah the midwife did that i also had a student midwife in with me as well she was lovely um so maybe that's why things were a little bit slower as well because she was kind of doing things and then those things were being checked by the other midwife um and stuff like that so yeah once my waters were broken um at, sorry at this point I was also in the delivery suite so they broke my waters in the delivery suite rather than the ward um and I was in there they then put me on the hormone drip which um is obviously part of induction I think it was the hormone drip that like I say all through along my pregnancy is what scared me because I know that's what can make your contractions really painful um and things like that so anyway they put me on this drip and I believe they kind of up it every hour or every so often again I was being monitored the whole time I still had the bands on me and I had both midwives um in the room with me the whole time as well like they never left the delivery suite um because they were just constantly monitoring Noah's heart rate I don't actually know if that's just part of induction or if that's because I've gone in that morning with reduced movement that that's why they were constantly monitoring him I'm not too sure also he was very very low um and he likes to move around he is a wriggler and he's still a wriggler now he's born um so they they struggled like his heart rate kept like moving sides and sometimes they couldn't quite hear it so they kept having to sort of rearrange the tapes on my belly and stuff as well um but anyway that was all fine I started the drip and I think maybe like a few hours in the midwives kept saying to me like oh can you feel that contraction like my contractions then started and I was like mm, like not really like it's a bit of like niggling kind of period type cramps but nothing crazy um and they were like okay and I guess they were asking 
that in case I needed pain relief or anything like that. Um, so on the topic of pain relief, <laughs> um, throughout probably the past few months of being pregnant, the last few months of being pregnant, my, I opted or I wanted to have a water birth um, and just be really open-minded. Like I was, wasn't against any kind of pain relief, but I wanted the water birth and then I just wanted to see how my labour went and see how I dealt with the pain. And if I wanted a drug or I needed something, then I would kind of decide there and then. I didn't really want anything off the table, but yeah, I like the idea of a water birth. I thought it would be like cal more calming, um, not calm, but more calming. I also thought, and obviously that's why they offer it, it would help with like some of the pain as well. Like, you know, if you get period cramps and you want like a nice warm bath or something like, so that was my mentality. When I was induced, obviously I couldn't have the water birth with being constantly monitored as well. Um, so that just, it never happened. We, we didn't get the water birth. Um, so that was that. So the, my two midwives that were looking after me at the time, they then went on their break um, and another midwife came in to again monitor me and things like that. Like that. And the, at this point I would say the contractions definitely I could feel them. They were a lot more painful. Um, I was kind of moaning a little bit um, and stuff like that. I think Mark could tell like I was in more pain and everything like that. But they were still like manageable. I didn't. I still didn't ask for any pain relief or anything. I would say then maybe half an hour of the two midwives going on their break and the new one looking after me, the contractions ramped up even more. Um, I could feel, I literally felt like my pelvis <laughs> was gonna split in half. I had really bad lower back pain as well. Um, I remember getting up and going to the toilet and yeah, I could barely walk. I was like hobbling back and I got back to the bed and I think I said to Mark, like, I need something. Like, I can't, um, I can't carry on like this, like without any pain relief. So he um, asked the midwife if I could have some gas and air. Um, so I had some gas and air. She like showed me how to use it and everything. Um, and at this point, again, the contractions were really ramping up and I was really using that gas and air. I was kind of groaning <laughs> my way through the contractions. I was really breathing it in. Um, and I do remember saying to the midwife, like, I feel like I need to poo. <laughs> I was like, I need to poo, uh, a bit TMI, but that's, that's how it felt. It's what everyone says and that's how it felt. Um, and she just kept saying to me, oh, it's just because like his head's really low, um, like don't worry, just breathe through it, use the gas in air, it's a great pain relief. Um, that's something I will say about the gas in air, I didn't find it was pain relief, I felt like it was a distraction from the pain. So because I was concentrating on breathing in the gas, like correctly, breathing it out correctly, like slowly, not sort of in a panicked manner. Um, I felt like that distracted me from the pain slightly, but I definitely wouldn't say, for me anyway, that it was pain relief. Um, anyway, so she just kept saying this, and then the uh, the two midwives um, that I had came back from their break, the other one left. Obviously they could then see I was on gas and air, so my pain had upped, and I remember again saying to Mark, the gas and air is not cutting it, like I need, um, they don't, they didn't actually do pethidine at my hospital, but I needed the, I can't remember what the other one's called. Um, but yeah, I needed like a, a tablet or something to like help with the pain. And again, I remember Mark saying to the midwives, like, can she have something else? Like the gas in is not, not really helping that much. So they're like, okay, Amy, like, um, we'll check you first of all, because again, before they do anything, they check your cervix, see how dilated you are, everything like that. And I was in a lot of pain at this point. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, like, I'm, I can't do this. In my head, I was still like two, three centimeters. Um, because it was first time baby, which I know labor can be prolonged with first time baby, and also induction. I just had it in my head that I was gonna be in hospital for days because I was being induced. So in my head, I was like, you're only, you're still only like two, three centimeters over, you're like, you're really weak right now. <laughs> like, because in my head I was like, this is the worst pain in the world. Um, 
So yeah, I was like, yeah, two, three centimeters. I just, I need all the drugs. I was setting myself up for at some point, I'm gonna need the epidural. Um, anyway, so they checked me and I remember her saying, Amy, do you feel like you need to push? And I said, yeah, I, I feel like I need a poo. And they said, you're 10 centimeters. I was like, what? So just, I should have mentioned this at the, back, at the start. So for context, they started me on the hormone drip at half one in the morning. Um, so just so you aware of that so yeah half one in the morning they started me on the hormone drip and then obviously things progressed quite quickly from there um and i think i was then after i'd hit 10 centimeters i pretty much started to push straight away um i think mark said that i was pushing for about just over 20 minutes like i don't think it was even quite half an hour um and the pain oh my gosh um so obviously by this point i was 10 centimeters i couldn't have any other pain relief i couldn't have an epidural i couldn't have any drugs or medication or anything like that so i was literally just doing this all on gas and air um the whole time that i've been doing it anyway um and again it was really just a bit more of a distraction um for me but anyway we pushed and noah was born um I I wasn't I was kind of out of it at this point I think that with the gas and air and just like the pain in general um I won't lie to you guys it was it was painful um but yeah I think how quickly it all happens that I was just grateful of that that I wasn't in this pain for like a prolonged period of time so half past one in the morning I went on the hormone drip and at um, just past 4.30 in the morning, Noah was born. So all in all, my labor really was just kind of like three hours. It was a little bit more than that. Um, but yeah, about three hours. Um, so really, really quick for first time baby and induction, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, which is why I've kind of said that this is a positive um, induction story, not just labor story, but induction story, because I want people to know that it doesn't have to be prolonged and everything like that. Um, anyway, so Noah was born at, yeah, 4.36 in the morning. Um, he gave us a little bit of a scare because, um, and I don't want to like worry anyone or, you know, like trigger warning, I guess. He did come out and he needed, um, a little bit of help to start breathing. So the, in my birth plan, Mark was going to be cutting the umbilical cord, but that didn't happen. As soon as he was born, the midwives cut the umbilical cord very, very quickly. Um, he was briefly on my chest whilst they did that. This, All this information has actually come from Mark as well, because again, I was a little bit out of it. And I remember seeing his eyes kind of roll back, kind of flicker. So I kind of knew he was like, okay, but obviously something wasn't quite right. But they cut the umbilical cord really quickly. They took him off me. He wasn't crying um, at this point. And that's obviously every mother's worst fear. Um, and I believe he needed five pumps of oxygen then. And then he let out the biggest cry ever and he was put back on my chest. So um, it was all good. But yeah, he gave us a little bit of a scare and obviously, it was all very quick. The emergency button was pushed by one of the midwives and a team of like people came in. It was all very quick. Like they was to take it very seriously, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, the good thing is that he was all, all fine. Um, and yeah, he spent a little bit of time on my chest doing skin to skin, which is something I really wanted um, before Mark then took him to give him his first feed, which was super cute. Um, yeah, he was born at six pound four, if I haven't already said. So he's actually quite a small baby considering he was past his due date as well. Um, but yeah, I'm glad he was small because it means now we're like four weeks on. He looks big to me, but some babies are probably born that size. Um, so yeah, we've had a really cute tiny baby, which has been lovely. Um, so yeah, Mark was feeding him. I did need a few stitches and things, so whilst they were getting to work on that, we were, I was like watching Mark feed Noah and um, I did use the gas and air a little bit for my stitches. They do obviously numb the area, which was um, absolutely fine. Um, but 
you can still like feel the tugging and stuff so they said yeah feel free to use gas and air so i use that a little bit as well um again tmi and if you're squeamish like maybe fast forward um but i did lose quite a lot of blood um what they told me after i had my stitches and i kind of sort of was all like cleaned up and everything they said um we do need to tell you that you did hemorrhage um she said it sounds worse than it is because obviously if you don't know when you're pregnant your blood count your blood basically doubles so what i'd lost just sort of brought me back down to a normal level of blood if that makes sense um so yeah there was that to throw in the mix as well and i think part of the reason why um when Noah came out he needed a bit of help with breathing was it was all very quick um I think he sort of came out he was in a little bit of shock and stuff like that so um yeah they obviously did all his checks and everything before he were discharged and allowed to go home and all of that was fine so I think that was the main reason um as to why that happened I'm trying to think if there was anything else so this, obviously at this point we're still all in the um, delivery suite and then once kind of like he'd had his feed, I was all fine. Um, I took myself off, I had a shower. Um, we got Noah dressed in his um, first little onesie outfit. And then once we were all sort of packed up and ready, we were then moved to the ward um, where all like the other mums are with their babies. Um, so we moved to the ward um, and we were there until about 7 p.m. that night so again I was luckily discharged very quickly from the hospital so he was born at 4 30 a.m. on the 6th of December and we were discharged at 7 p.m. on the 6th of December they did say I could stay in overnight but again I really didn't want to I don't like clinical settings I just wanted to go home and have my own bed um, and also Mark I, I also had a fear of being in hospital for the first night on my own with this newborn baby like I really wanted Mark with me um, and they did actually say that Mark could stay um, that was absolutely fine there was like a reclining chair for him to sleep on but obviously they're not very comfortable that wouldn't have been particularly comfortable so yeah we just decided to go home um, obviously once again he had it no one had his final checks and everything like that so um, yeah that's kind of how it went to be honest um again i'm trying to think if i've forgotten anything i think they're the main things i really just wanted to talk about the induction process and my birth story because yeah i do think it was um a positive one obviously at the end of the day labor is going to be painful um i'm kind of not not annoyed but I feel like in my head I don't know what a build-up of contractions now feels like. I feel like I went from oh a little bit of like niggly period pain to like full on my back's, back's breaking in half, my pelvis is breaking in half, you, you know it's time to push. Um, for me there wasn't that kind of middle ground bit. Um, I also don't know because I was on the hormone drip where my those contractions I was experiencing that were really painful where I felt like my body was splitting in half were they more so because of the hormone drip because i've heard of that as well so i don't know if they're like normal contractions um obviously i can't help any of those things but you know those are things that i've just like queried in my head like oh i wonder i wonder what it would be like without the hormone drip or if i'd had more of a prolonged um labor but yeah i i'm glad it was quick so <laughs> i'm not complaining about that um I also wanted to mention as well because my last video was my pack my hospital bag with me and I definitely overpacked. I didn't use half of what was in my hospital bag. Again, I think I packed thinking I was going to be in hospital for days regardless of induction or not. Um, and in actual fact, I wasn't even in hospital for a day really. Um, so I definitely overpacked so if you want me to kind of go through what I did use what I didn't use then let me know I can film a little video on that as well but yeah um I'm aware you guys would have just seen that video um and I don't want you thinking you need all these things with you like even the snacks <laughs> like we didn't need snacks like I got I got three meals um 
my breakfast, lunch, dinner. They were all like three course meals. Mark ended up going off and getting like a meal deal and stuff. So yeah, we, we really didn't need half of what was in the bag. Um, but I like to be prepared, more prepared than underprepared. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that as well. Is there anything else I can think of? I'm sure there is because I've just, I haven't even written notes down or anything. This has all just come from memory, which is why it's been a little bit jumpy and all over the place. But um, I guess if any of you guys do have questions um, or like are just curious, then drop me a message in the comments section below and I will definitely get back to you. Um, but yeah, I think otherwise I'm going to go ahead and conclude today's video. It's been a while since I've said that. Um, so yeah, I really hope that you, I was going to say enjoyed it. Can you enjoy this type of video? I'm not sure, but I hope you found it informative anyway. And if any of you are pregnant, worried about induction, anything like that, I hope that my experience has kind of put your mind at rest a bit and also just know that like you're in the best hands. That's one other thing I would say that my hospital, all the staff there were amazing. They were lovely. I think I also had a fear that like maybe some of the midwives weren't going to be very nice to me um I, I think you just hear horror stories don't you so yeah that was another thing as well but my experience again my camera just cut out but yeah my experience the um midwives all the staff there were really really lovely and took great care of me so i hope that also um helps if you're worried about that as well um but yeah thank you so much for watching everyone um i'm not too sure what my next video will be this isn't going to become like a mum baby channel um there might be little videos like this initially because it is all fresh and new and i'm sure noah might appear on a vlog here and there but um i still definitely want to do like my haul videos and everything like that so yeah also let me know if there's any videos you want to see um and let me know in the comments but hopefully i'll see all of you very very soon in my next video thanks so much guys bye